Hello everyone, I've got something quite interesting today. I decided that, uh, you know, I talk a little bit here and there about kind of the very nebulous and that sometimes kooky state of the really early sixes. Um, so I decided I would just run through and show off some of the defunct maps that they used to play. And today we are on CP Erosion RC1. And of course, RC1 means release candidate one, meaning the map is like basically done, just minor tweaks here and there. And if the wiki I'm looking at is correct, this did get played for season one of UGC and then never again. Uh, this is a map that got made in 2008. And yeah, let's just look at it. So the first thing you'll notice is it is massive. This map is just ginormous. Um, let me actually get some health here. So of course, the one thing I suppose I do want to like talk about how this kind of map would play out. Um, and the first thing that just sticks out is Sniper. Sniper is going to be the most centralizing class on this map because, well, we'll just we'll just take a look at it first. So, of course, spawn, you have some insane high ground over the point, which already is going to make defending the point a lot easier. Um, so this is the last point, and then let's go over to second, which is just a straight line over here. And you have the second point here. Now, of course, connecting um, last to second is also this uh, cliff side. Oh, there's an invisible wall up there. Um, this cliff side, which is kind of like a hub of uh, connections because it connects to mid. It uh, overlooks second um, from the mid to second side. And it also overlooks second uh, from the second to last side, although it doesn't really see second because there is a cliff in the way. But uh, this height's pretty difficult to get to because from mid, you know, you're not going to be able to jump your way up here unless you're... Yeah, no, you won't be able to jump your way up here. Maybe um, medics... Yeah, medics would be able to do a jump off these boxes. So if you were coming from the other team's uh, cliff, I guess, then yeah, you could just cross mid and then continue this way. But getting up there from the floor is very difficult. And this uh, sort of girder walkway is pretty much the only way for the non-jumping classes to get up to this height. So it's very uh, it's very premier high ground where you can just rotate and, and watch all sorts of things, but uh, difficult to get up here. Now, of course, there are just... It's such a large map. And this was, like... Well, <laughs> we will continue our thoughts later. And then, of course, this is the midpoint, so... Um, the map sort of forms, each side of the map sort of forms a horseshoe um, with last, and then you take a 90 degree turn to get to second, and then another 90 degree turn to get to mid, and then they're all sort of linked up in the center of the horseshoe with this cliff area. Uh, but yeah, so I, I was mentioning Sniper, of course, is gonna be the premier class on this map because it is just sightline after sightline and also just so many little tiny spots that you can hide and take unpredictable peaks from because it's almost a three-tiered map where you have the um what would you even call these hoodoos i guess you gotta have this hoodoo layer which is a little interesting in the sense that like you kind of have to jump between them um it's very uneven ground which would make uh getting splash damage less consistent um, with all these um, jagged displacements and whatnot. But, um, yeah, it's like three-tiered because you have the absolute bottom floor, which sort of goes in between these hoodoos. You have the top floor, which forms a bunch of walkways in this cliff area we've been talking about. And then kind of the middle floor of the, the tops of these hoodoos themselves. Um, so it's very crazy. And it, it just the sheer size of the map and the amount of clutter and detail um, between every single point makes it feel like a map that, you know, requires a ton of people, right? And I'm actually, I feel like this map would fit right in on like the hundred player servers because it is just that large. Um, although it would be miserable to play against like 10 snipers. Um, but no, this was played in 6v6. 
Also, as far as like health and ammo pack placement, it seems kind of random. Um, the ammo and health, like this pack here absolutely seems more intuitive. Like this is actually like a gameplay space that someone would want to be in anyway. So putting a pack there uh, makes sense. But what, like a small health just tucked in this little corner here for seemingly no reason. Um, and then, of course, just a medium pack here, a small ammo underneath this beam, and then a full ammo and full health. Full ammos, I'm pretty sure, exist. Actually, do they exist in any Sixes maps? You know, now that I think about it, I don't think they do. Um, and that's a curious thing that uh, doesn't get talked about too much. And maybe that should be the topic of its own video, actually, I'm now thinking about, is the uh, pack selection on maps. Um, because there are deliberately no full health packs, and I don't think there's any full ammo packs either. They they go up to half at the maximum. But yeah, the, the health and ammo pack placement feels quite random, um, with just tiny packs here and there, without too much consideration to where people would be gravitating towards. Um, that being said, where people would be gravitating towards. Now, of course, it is an insanely sniper-dependent map. Um... So you don't want to be crossing sight lines and whatnot. Um, so maybe you might see teams kind of play in the floor, low ground, uh, snaking their way around, trying to avoid sight lines. Um, it wouldn't be too shocking either if they just played to tank their sniper and try and win the SVS and then try and take like good high ground positioning as a result. Because if the other team is trying to play on or near the point... Um, or honestly, if a team were holding two, they would try to hold from cliff because that just watches and spams out everything and kind of makes it impossible to do anything other than contest directly, but that's so easy to lock out. Um, yeah, I imagine this would be a position that a team would like to hold, but of course it's very out of the way to get to because you have to walk up or you have to walk all the way back to spawn to get up to walk over here. Um... So, for being such valuable positioning, it is kind of ridiculous how difficult it is to get here for teams. Um, yeah, just such a weird map in so many different ways. Uh, stuff just isn't clipped off. You can just bump into whatever. Uh, the actual like technical expertise of the map is not really what I'm necessarily concerned about here. Uh, this is the forward spawn, by the way. So I imagine when you have control of second, you'd be spawning here. Um, unless there's another spawn I missed. Oh, no. There. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wait. No, no, no. So this is the blue spawn. This is the blue point. So this is the spawn you'd have if you have mid. Um, which is just goofy. Oh, these are steps. So you can bump into those. Yeah, so to get to two, you'd have to come all the way over here, and then you'd be in a contesting position for two. And then, if you have control of second as well, then this says red resupply. But this is also red. Curious. Out blue resupply. So I'm presuming... Is this door open for me? I'm presuming that this would be the blue forward spawn. Um, if you have control of second. That would make sense. Although it's very counterintuitive that there's a big red symbol here. Um, symbolizing that it's kind of a red building. Oh, I suppose on the flip side as well, this is a blue symbol. And the fact that the door is let out in both directions makes it a little ambiguous. Um, but I'm pretty sure just based on the fact that the actual spawns themselves have the red and blue resupply labels means that this is the blue forward spawn and that's the red forward spawn. It would make you spawn closer to the point. Um, and I'm curious if this is even a symmetrical map. Yeah, it definitely isn't. With the wood here is like clipped in a different way than the steel beams over here. They're steel great. Um, I'm not sure what other parts are asymmetrical and whether that's like a relevant thing or not because of course we do play an asymmetrical map in product um that you know you could argue has some advantages for one side or the other 
Uh, but yeah, very, very weird map. A lot of kind of pointless spaces. Like back here, you would only route here for this pack. Maybe that's why the pack was introduced. Can you even stand up here? You can. Why would you stand up here, though? I don't know. Almost like a hiding spot if a team pushed mid. Um, although there's just so many hiding spots if a team were to push past. It'd be very difficult to clear everything. Because, again, it is just an insanely cluttered map. Um, so, yeah, what would a modern TF2 meta look like on this map? Well, I mean, as I've mentioned already, very much sniper-oriented. Um, and curiously enough, I don't think you would really see many defensive off-classes on last, like, Engineer or Heavy. Um, because those are generally pretty limited range classes. They, they don't, they aren't very effective at longer ranges. And they usually operate really well in, like, a last point kind of range. Now, of course, different last points are different sizes, but, uh, still, they're, they're generally in the same genre of size. Versus this, like, a heavy is just gonna get annihilated by a sniper and not really be able to get in a good position to contest point to begin with. Um, and then a sentry gun is gonna be incredibly spammable from pretty much anywhere. I suppose you could have some random guns that uh, are like tucked away in corners or whatnot watching the point. Like, you know, you could have a gun here um, that does watch the point. That'd be pretty nice if you could actually get your engineer in that position. Uh, but, of course, it'd just be a shooting gallery to actually get there. Um, but still, just extremely wide open. And the defenders as well just have just supreme high ground and it is insanely easy to contest the point from pretty much right out of spawn and the attacking team can't really contest back right uh, another thing i remember looking back at this map there's like just random places you can stand i'm pretty sure oh you can just stand up here okay no that's <laughs> that's cool i guess uh can you stand on that truck over here Nope, that is... does not have collision. And I wouldn't be surprised if this is asymmetrical for Red's last. So we'll go through here. Looking like... Oh, the billboard is uh, not clipped off. But yeah, you can just stand up on this cliff. Like, how do you contest a point against a soldier up here? You'd have to bomb that, and it's like already difficult to bomb that because you need to like do a high bomb you can't just you shouldn't be able to just get up there with one rocket jump i don't think no that's that's pretty far um and you'd have to do a high bomb off this like super jagged displacement wall um and that's just to get the one guy off like it's very easy to get counter bombed because of course the defending soldier probably could just jump up with a c tap or something from uh from that area so ridiculous map um Absolutely ridiculous. And I'm curious, as far as flank versus combo doors go, of course they are interchangeable at times. Um, there are times, for instance, you know, on process, IT is notorious as the flank uh, versus like choke is sort of where the combo goes. However, that absolutely gets mixed up multiple times a day, or not a day, a game. And it's not uncommon for the combo to want to take an Uber through IT or something, um, in which case the flank switches it up. Uh, but that being said, there are still general flank and combo doors. Um, and what would the flank and combo look like on this map? It's very hard to tell, honestly, because as I've mentioned, this central cliff area, why is this something that it's not like step size? So you just bump into it. That's ridiculous. And there's just like props. <laughs> like there's just barrels here just because. And barrels here just because. It's uh, ridiculous. I wonder if that's actually in the flip side as well. Um, but yeah, this, this central cliff area, as I've already mentioned a couple times, is... Oh, no, it's just different props. So yeah, the gameplay is absolutely different in these different areas. Um, and you'll notice that uh, the barrels on the red side were like kind of sticking out and obstructing this view around the corner. But here that is not the case. So, of course, gameplay is going to be different on each side. Um, and yeah, you can see here, those barrels are sticking out, obstructing that corner. Very curious. Um, but, this almost feels like it might be... Well, I'll explain my thoughts. So, on the face of things, 
This would seem like a flank area just by virtue of the fact that it's more difficult for the combo to actually get there. Um, they have to go really out of their way to climb up here through a separate area versus a roamer could just jump up here and be contesting this area. However, it's also difficult for a scout to get up here. Maybe you can winger jump on top of the point and then from there it's, it's rather easy. But... Yeah, not very accessible for a flank scout to get to either. And I've already talked about how it's such a desirable position to be at for just a combo in general. Like if you have add, for instance, and you're trying to push the point with add, um, the other team obviously doesn't want to get caught to your uber. And if you come up to this cliff, then you are threatening to just completely wrap them. And wrapping, I think, would be a pretty strong element of this map. Because if, for example, you know, the sniper is just completely um, locking down the combo from one of just the insane sniper positions that this map has, um, then, you know, a flank shove pushing through here is threatening to get behind the combo and do some sort of pinch um, or any, any kind of plan like that. Um, on the flip side, I wonder if you would even, like, send your combo projectiles up here just to avoid the sniper sightline. Like, you would just have your medic hold back and have, like, your demo and pocket or something, like, actually contest from the height and have, you know, four players shove the flank. I feel like wrapping would be a pretty big element of this map just because this is such a central hub that connects every single point together, uh, which we don't really see on other maps it's almost like a it's the closest analog i can think of that just connects everything is like big door you can get into lobby um as you'll notice of course you know usually there's these kind of intermediate spaces that separate points that i talk about a lot um so think your process it's your process sewers um you know your sunshine valleys your sunshine cafes uh, it's very, very common for, and of course every map has a lobby, it's very common for there to be these intermediate spaces that are sort of isolated from the two points through choke points or doorways, um, but serve as a connecting area between the two. And of course there's a lot of gameplay that, uh, that evolves around that. Um, about who can take that space and pressure and then give it up when they lose the pick during the sack or whatnot, and then the other team gets to take the space and pressure back and forth. So, you know, both teams will enter uh, Valley, for instance, pressuring for a sack and pressuring for a counter sack um, over the course of, like, you know, even 20 seconds. There are no intermediate spaces in this map. It is all incredibly open. You can't even reasonably say there is a choke point other than right here. And that's already so difficult for players to get through from one side um, that it doesn't really function that much like a choke point. Everything is so insanely open that on one hand, it seems like it would be incredibly easy to dry push a point. Because um, just whoever controls this cliff positioning kind of gets to win. Because if the attackers have it, they can kind of spam out the defenders from both angles. So anything here is already you're going to get spammed a lot. And if you're like hugging kind of this corner, um, then not only are you at a disadvantageous fight for a team of just approaching here, um, but also you are threatened by the potential wrap from, uh, from that cliff as well. Um, so yeah, on the, on the face of it, it seems intuitive that a dry push kind of meta and just being able to take space for free um, makes sense, but of course you have to factor in the sniper just slowing everything down, because I think this map would play at a snail's pace of just trying to take out their sniper first and then work from there, <laughs> honestly. Um, so yeah, I don't know if I have any other notes about uh, CP Erosion here. Very, very strange map. Um, did get played in sixes. Also, the skybox is remarkably short for for how much high ground there is. Like, even a single rocket jump can have you hit the skybox if you're jumping from up here. Um, but yeah, that's uh, CP Erosion. Very, very goofy map. Um, 
and very interesting to think about because um, nowadays what players enjoy and what makes for good 5 CP gameplay is more figured out and there is more of a science to it um, and a lot of a lot of maps, well, maps always take inspiration from other maps, maybe with the exception of this one. Um, but you can see maps that, you know, are Badlands inspired. That was something like Villa's flank, or uh, second to mid to second uh, area was largely called like Badlands inspired. Um, a lot of maps are process inspired, you know, for a long time people considered Sunshine just process 2.0. Um, and I do think it is a better process. But... Um, yeah, this is from a time when, you know, what makes the gameplay interesting wasn't really that well understood, and you just have people kind of throwing whatever around, um, trying to make whatever. So it's no surprise this was only played for one season, um, but what an interesting map we have here, and just a little piece of, yeah, that TF2 6v6 history. Uh, so yeah, hopefully this was interesting, maybe a map you guys had never seen before. I had not seen this, uh at all and then the second that i loaded in i was actually completely shocked when i first saw it so i figured it would be a good thing to talk about um yeah hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you next time